We are going to follow the following steps to create a memory walker. So the first thing, take a screenshot or write these steps down, but we're not gonna really, I'm not really gonna have them on the screen anymore. I'm just gonna actually build this. So the first thing that we're going to do is add a RAM unit. Um, it's available under the memory group, so we can look in memory. We can find RAM right here. We have D flip flops, T, J, K, S, R flip flops, register, counter, shift register, random generator, which we will use, RAM and ROM. But we want RAM. We can zoom in with this little arrow down here. So we have our RAM. I'm just going to put it right here. Now we need to configure it to have 16 address bits. So from 8, we're going to go to 16. Watch how these numbers at the front change. So I'm changing it to 16. So these change and these change as well. Now we want to also have eight data bits. So our bit width is going to be eight. Let's see what happens if we change it. See these change. So let's change it back to eight. That's what we want. So we're going to have eight uh, data bits. And um, I think that the address bits basically is going to hold our data bits. So we can have 16 addresses and then we have eight data bits for each of them. Now it's going to have separate load and store ports. This should make our life easier. Separate load and store ports. And so what we do is we can see that we've changed this from A and then we took out whatever we had here, but we want to put that in. So we want our D and our STR here. We also want a counter located under a memory also. So we can take our counter and we're going to bring it right here. We want to connect it to the address bus of our RAM. So let's take this Q, this is the output, and we're going to connect it to the address bus. Bus. We have incompatible widths. Well, why is that? Well, remember, this takes 16. This is only outputting an 8. So we need to change this from 8 to be 16. And now this is going to be OK. This works. So we're going to increment the counter every single clock cycle. So this is going to increment every single clock cycle. So what that means is that we're going to have to go and get a clock. Let's try wiring the clock right here. I'll drag it right here. This is our clock. So again, every clock cycle, we're going to want to um, change this. So that means we're just going to connect the clock. Actually, we want to connect the clock into the CT. So I'm going to move this down here. I'll move this it's a little bit wonky. So control Z, take this, take this, delete that, and we'll bring the clock in right here. So the clock goes in right there. Now we need a random generator and connecting the output to the store input is what we're going to do. Um, this is the input that we're connecting it into. Let's first get a random generator. So if we look, doesn't seem to be in our wiring. Um, it looks like it's in our memory. So let's take a random generator. We'll place it right here. So this is what a random generator is going to look like. Cues our output again. So we're going to take this and we're going to bring it into D. So reading the instructions, it says add a random generator and connect its output to the store input of the RAM. So our D is going to be the store input. I wish it would be a little bit more specific about telling us that, but this is the store input. And it says, how many bits does this need to have? Well, this needs to have data bits of eight because the data bits accepted in here are eight, right? Remember the registers are 16, so this has to be 16, this has to be eight. If we try to change this, we get an incompatible width. So let's go back to eight. As always, don't forget to connect the clock generator to all inputs that need it. Well, notice how this is an arrow here. This has an arrow here. So we're going to need to connect the clock to this as well. So the clock is going to be connected to here as well. So we have our clocks connected here. Um, everything looks pretty good so far. Now there's one more input right here, this one. This one also needs a clock input. So we can take this from here. We can sneak it down this way and then just connect it into our clock input like this. We want to set the wire signal on the RAM high so data can be written to it. So let's go and set it to high. So it says set the write signal. I believe that's going to be this select. If we want to set it to high, we're going to take this power right here. And it's good that we'll have this power. We'll put it over here because this power is actually going to connect into our counter and into a random generator as well. 
So let's move it up. It's going to go into our counter. I want it to go straight in there. So I'll line it properly. It goes into our counter like this. And then it's going to go into here to power it. And lastly, it's going to go into our select. So we're going to go into here. So this is going to power everything. Now we also need ground for some things. Not everything, but for our counter and for our random generator. So let's take this, it's getting a little bit confused, so let's actually wire it from our ground. Or we can just put a ground for any, these individual ones. We don't want it to get too cluttered. So we'll put the ground here, and then for this one, I'll go straight down here, and I'll put the ground here, and so now this is grounded. So each of these are now grounded. Everything looks pretty good. We can try to run it. It says, note the RAM module has the option to view, store, and load its contents to and from a file. Assuming that's what this load and this CL are, this clear is. So that's something we need to familiarize yourself. We're going to use that later. And we can, for debugging, connect hex displays on buses to verify the memory is filling properly. But let's just test what we have here first. So we can go to simulate, we go to ticks enable, and this should move through our registers and it should be putting random numbers inside of each of these registers and then moving through the registers. So once it gets to six, it should go and we should be looking at more. So we'll let it go through, goes to eight, should go to 10, and it'll be in hex, so it'll be A, and it will go on like this. So that's just how we will do this. The criterion is when we open the submission and enable the clock, the position in the RAM should be proceeding and filling in with random value. So this is how ours would look. So this in itself works, but at the same time, um, we should do the additional part where it says the debug and hex. So I've clicked our hex displays. I'm gonna bring them out just like this. We're going to go up here and use a splitter and we can place this right here. We're gonna take the wires um, from here to our hex displays, move these up. This one will go here and then this one will go here. And then we have incompatible widths, but we'll fix that in a second. This should go to this output right here. Now let's fix our incompatible widths. So right here, um, the bit within, notice how the output here is eight, it's only two here. Well, it should be eight, right, to take that input. So we'll put that there. It seems like there's a problem with this one, so we'll delete it and just place this wire again. This looks good, let me reset this. So once it's reset, um, let's run it again. The clocks are on one tick each. So if I'm to simulate this, I'll press Control K. And we're gonna scroll through here one tick, but we can see we're not outputting anything still. Let's fix that. Well, notice how all of these, it's zero, two, four, six. Well, instead of having it as one tick, let's move this to two ticks each. So these are two ticks. Let's control K and try to run this again. Well, it looks like this is running, you know, it's passing all of our values in here, but it's still not updating anything into our display. Well, that's because even though these are two ticks, our actual RAM is not set to that. So notice how this right here, this clock is going into our RAM. Well, it's two ticks. Let's actually put the one going into our RAM as one tick. How we're going to do that is very simple. We're just going to put a new clock down here. We're going to break the connection right here and we're going to connect it this way. Notice how we have one ticks each here. We can try to simulate this, control K. Still does, it, and now it works. Okay, <laughs> that's great. It works now. So this one's high and low is two ticks. Um, and then this one is one tick. So I believe that has to do something with how, again, this is incrementing by like a factor of two. You can see it's gonna do that. And it's gonna output everything that's in here. Each random number is gonna go through here because it's going going to pass through for one tick while this one is two. It's a little bit confusing, but think about how this is two each and this is the input. And then this is just going to the output. This is for the clock in for this. Um, and we can see it continues to go down without any problem. And that's how we would do this lab, just to clean it up. I would push this a little bit closer, but that's just not very necessary. And that's gonna be it for this.